What's up family, this is Preston Perry, and this is Bold TV where we live, love, truth. Let's get right into it. So on this episode, what we're going to be talking about is what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe and how we can use scripture to show them that what they believe is wrong. On the last episode, I told you guys about the background of the Jehovah's Witnesses. I let you know about the founder, Charles Taze Russell, and how the Jehovah's Witnesses doctrine got started. But on this episode, we're gonna be looking at detailed things that the Jehovah's Witnesses believe and how scripture contradicts what they believe. Now, the first thing that we're gonna look at is how Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus is not God. They don't believe that Jesus is God because they believe that Jesus is created by the Almighty God, Jehovah. So Jehovah's Witnesses believe that if Jesus is a created being, there's no way for him to be the Almighty God because the only one that is not created was God himself. Now before we even deal with this lie, let's first deal with a foundational truth. We're gonna start with Genesis 1. In Genesis 1 it says this, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It's the first nine words of the Bible. Now any scientist would tell you that the world consists of three things, time, space, and matter. But in the first nine words of the Bible you have all three things. You have time, you have space, you have matter. In the beginning is when God established time. When he created the heavens is when he created the space. And when he created earth is when he created all matter. And when you look at the words in the beginning, we shouldn't just think about a long time ago when God created the heavens and the earth, but we should think about when God established time itself for the heavens and the earth to fit within a time frame. When I talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, this is one of the things that I like to talk about. And ironically, a lot of them always agree with me. They say yes. God did establish time in the beginning. He's the only one that was there in the beginning. Nothing else existed outside of time except God because he is the only one that's eternal. And I tell them, great. We're on the same page. But from there, I like to move them to John 1.1 where it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now before we even deal with the words in the beginning, let's first deal with in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now the crazy thing about this scripture is the word in this scripture is referring to the person of Jesus. Jesus is the word. Even Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus is the living word. Why? Because in verse 14 in this passage it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Pretty simple. So you may ask, if Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and they believe that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, why don't Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus is God when it literally says, He's God? Well, that brings me back to the New World Translation Bible. In the New World Translation Bible, John 1, 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. You see, the Jehovah's Witnesses change the scriptures. And that's the reason why the New World Translation is not a true translation of the Bible. The reason why is because the translation never changed the meaning or the context of a subject. What they did was they made Jesus a God and not the God. Now, one of the reasons why they changed the scripture, Jehovah's Witnesses would tell you that because in the original Greek, it wasn't the word the in front of God in John 1, so they changed it and put an A in front of God and said that Jesus is a God. But that's a contradiction because in this passage, it refers to the Father God many times. And it's not the word the in front of the Father God, but they didn't minimize the Father God into a lowercase g and put an A in front of God there. They put an A in front of God referring to Jesus because that's what they wanted Jesus to be in their hearts. Like I said, a translation never changes the meaning of something. So one of the things I like to do when I talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, because that Bible says something different, referring to Jesus being the Word and the Word was with God, and it says the Word was a God, because that Bible says something different, and they believe that the New World Translation is the most accurate translation throughout the whole world, I like to deal with indirect things in this passage that also points to Jesus being God. And that is the first three words of this scripture, in the beginning. We shouldn't just think that it's by coincidence that John is using the same language, in the beginning. What John is doing, John is pointing us back to Genesis. He's saying, you know, remember in Genesis what God says, in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was also Jesus. In the beginning, when God established time, Jesus was there, in the beginning. One of the things I like to ask Jehovah's Witnesses is, 
if Jesus is a created being, how is he then able to be there when time is established? How was he able to be there in the beginning if he's a created being? That's impossible because the only thing that can be there in the beginning is the one who existed before the beginning and that was God and God alone. When God established time, he was the only one that was there. He was the only one that was present. Why? Because he is the only one that existed before the beginning. So therefore, it's impossible for Jesus to be a created being. Why? Because he was there in the beginning. Let's just look at the language. It does not say in the beginning, Jesus was created. It says in the beginning was the word, meaning in the beginning was Jesus, meaning Jesus was just present. Letting us know that Jesus is not a created being, but he is God in the flesh. He is pre-existent. He is eternal because he is also equal with the Father God existing before time began. Now, the second thing I want us to look at is verse 2 and verse 3 of John 1. Verse 2 simply says, he was in the beginning with God. Letting us know again that Jesus was there in the beginning with God. John exaggerates this point. Verse 3 says this, through him all things were made. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses would tell you this, that yes, Jesus is the first created being and then God used Jesus to create everything else. So Jesus is the only thing that God, Jehovah God created directly and he used Jesus to create everything else. But that's not true because look at the language of John 1 verses 3. It says, through Christ all things were made and without him nothing was made that was made. Letting us know that if it falls in the made category, Christ indeed made it. John could have simply said, without Christ, nothing was made. But he exaggerates his point and says, without Christ, nothing was made that was made. Letting us know that if it falls in the made category, Christ indeed made it. And if Jesus is a created being, this scripture would mean that Jesus created himself, which doesn't make sense. Jesus made all things. The reason why he made all things is because he is God.